So getting straight to it, this is what we're going to be creating. Main.py, it's supposed to create the file ID, get the assistant ID, the thread ID, then we can make a question and I'm gonna ask what is the size of a lion? So hopefully it's going to start looping and first of all, start in progress and progress. As soon as it completes, we're gonna get like a log of the, the, the messages that are placed in the thread. Hopefully, okay, now we got it. And you see that like it's inverted, like it, it doesn't follow like the chat going from top to down. And we got the message that we sent, which was what is the size of a lion? And then we got the size of a lion varies between males and females. And this is basically reading this file right here, which was a control C, control V of the Wikipedia site. The important thing right here is to just see how they use the source message. This is very important so we can implement other other features, right? Uh, this is just test. Let's place it right here and let's look for annotations. Annotations. This annotations, like a lot of people are struggling in the OpenAI community to get this annotations back and I, I struggled myself with this. It simply did not return and there were cases on which I got the annotations like it was reading the source here in the playground but not in my API and that's just I don't know if it was buggy or not but I didn't change anything in my code and just the way I prompted the message just the way that I started telling the AI that it needed to read the, the file it simply started to read that file. See that in the instructions of when I created the assistant, I told it, you should only answer based on the files found. I think this single prompt here just raised the amount of times that the annotations really came back. And this annotations is really like useful simply because you can inform your user where's that source from, right? And especially if you're creating something that has to do with educational purposes, that, that would be really handy. So let's just take a fast look here at the code. This is a very simple code. I just structured it because I was really amazed at what OpenAI launched in the dev day. And I just started coding this, but it really doesn't serve any purpose. That isn't really getting to know better how this these APIs work. So in the documentation, you can come here at this creating assistance tab. And it's basically what, I, what I've done. I create, I get the file ID and I created a function for it. So create file, this just uses basically what's down here. Then the assistant, I created the assistant and just return the assistant. Actually, I could just return the assistant ID here because it's really all we use just to associate the threads and the messages to the threads that are associated, associated with the assistant. So, so down here, it ends up using the code interpreter as its type. And I really struggled with that because when you create an assistant, like there's, when you create the type retrieval, it kind of behaves in a different way. Like the way it just returns these annotations and you can see like a brief explanation of the annotations that I was talking about earlier. It starts the thread creating a message. This, I really didn't want to do that. So I just created the, an empty thread and the user just started the interaction, but this would really work if you just wanted to start the conversation. Like generally every chatbot would actually start the conversation and that would actually be ideal for many cases. So I just created a simple interaction here in which we have a persistent usage. This persistent usage is true. Let me really zoom in here. I, I forgot that maybe in YouTube this would be very tiny. I ask the, the user, like I make a question and this is done in the prompt like you guys have seen. Then I place the question as a message inside the thread. This I associate with the real user. You can send a file. Like I was using this thinking like I have to create each message using the file. So I have to send out the file IDs, but no, this is just for the user. If the user wants to send a new file. Okay, this is to run the thread. And after we run the thread, we, we can run the thread with a different model than what we used to create the assistant. This is this is a funny thing. Then we just retrieve the track, like keep track of the run, stat run status. And while the run status isn't completed, we just keep returning. Like this isn't the best ideal like coding solution. If just control C or CMD, if it doesn't get out of this loop right here. 
Then you retrieve all the messages from the thread inside this, this, this variable right here. And this print is what was responsible for generating all of this. Okay, that was just for us to see how its structure is. And this is the structure. Finally, we loop through the object list message data. And after looping through this object list, we output each value. Obviously, you can structure this way better. You could, um, first of all, start inverting this. And this was would basically be done by creating creating a, an array and placing each, each one of these inside an array. Let's just do this right away because this is actually bothering me. The problem is that I'm failing to get the response back. And I've just ch checked out the community and more people are getting that error even inside the playground. So at this point, like we're in very early stage, these features are very cool. And eventually I think they will be part of a lot of developers day to day. But for now, let's just breathe a little and, and really just use this knowing that it's in a better stage. This video was in the purpose of just really getting people to talk in the, the, the comments or even for us to open a new topic here in the community of OpenAI. So we can discuss like how we want to implement things and what we're doing or trying to do. It's I think that we can go much further together just trying to do the same thing, especially if like these these things we're trying to do are actually pretty basic and like one month from now, maybe it won't even be in the beta stage and it will be just being used by a lot and a lot, a lot of companies.